हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर अनिकेत पावनोजी एंड यू आर वाचिंग बेसिक केमिस्ट्री वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ बॉन्डिंग इन कोऑर्डिनेशन कंपाउंड्स इन द लास्ट वीडियो टुवर्ड्स द एंड वी हैव सीन मेरिट्स एंड डीमेरिट्स ऑफ क्रिस्टल फील्ड थियरी इन दैट वी हैव सीन द बॉन्ड बिटवीन द मेटल एंड द लिगेंड इज कवलेंट अकॉर्डिंग टू द मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल थियरी इन दिस वीडियो वी विल सी द एक्सपेरिमेंटल एविडेंसेस फॉर कवलेंट बॉन्डिंग इन कॉम्प्लेक्सेस There are many evidences for the covalent bonding in metal complexes but in this specific video we will see two evidences the first is electron spin resonance spectroscopy and the second is nephelaxotic effect let's start with electron spin resonance spectra it is a branch of absorption spectroscopy in which molecules having electrons with unpaired spins absorb radiations of microwave frequency we have to remember that electron spin resonance can be applied to only those molecules which contains unpaired electrons hence the diamagnetic molecules cannot be studied using esr spectroscopy esr spectroscopy basically depends upon the spin of an electron we know that there are two spins of electron plus 1 by 2 and minus 1 by 2 in the absence of magnetic field the spin quantum number values they are degenerate that means they have same energy level but in the presence of magnetic field or when we apply the magnetic field the degeneracy is removed and they split into two levels ms is equal to minus 1 by 2 having low energy high stability and the other is ms is equal to plus 1 by 2 having high energy low stability when microwave energy radiation falls onto the substance a electron shows a single absorption from ms is equal to minus 1 by 2 to ms is equal to plus 1 by 2 corresponding to this when we plot a graph of absorption versus magnetic field we get a smooth curve in electron spin resonance spectroscopy in simple words this is called as electron spin resonance spectroscopy where the molecules having unpaired electrons they absorb the radiation from microwave region and shows a smooth curve when we plot a graph of absorption versus magnetic field In case of transition metal complexes for example here i am taking the example of iridium cl6 2 minus iridium atomic number 77 its outermost electronic configuration is 5d7 6s2 in this specific complex the oxidation state of iridium metal is calculated as plus 4 in plus 4 oxidation state when we see the 5d orbitals there is only one unpaired electrons Hence this complex can be studied with the help of electron spin resonance spectroscopy. In the complex iridium Cl6 2 minus if this single electron is considered only on the iridium atom we should get a smooth curve in electron spin resonance spectroscopy. But instead of that it is observed that this single electron spends some time on each chlorine atom and instead of getting a smooth curve we get a serrated curve in electron spin resonance spectroscopy this serrated curve is possible only when when this single unpaired electron spends some of its time on each chlorine atom it is observed that it spends around 30% of its time on all the chlorines that means 5% of the time on single chlorine so that there are six chlorine atoms so 30% of the time the electron spends on all the chlorines and 70% of the time it spends on single iridium atom at the center of the complex it indicates that this single electron can travel from metal orbital to ligand orbital and this is possible only when there is an overlap between the ligand orbital and metal orbital this overlapping indicates there is a covalent bonding or there is a presence of covalent bonding between the metal and the ligand In this way electron spin resonance spectroscopy provides an evidence for the covalent bond between the metal and the ligand. Let's move to the second evidence nephelaxotic effect. Here I am taking the example of FeCn6 3 minus. Fe atomic number 26 its outermost electronic configuration is 3d6 4s2. Here the oxidation state is calculated as plus 3. If we consider free metal atom in plus 3 oxidation state it consists of five unpaired electrons 
In the case of d orbitals, these orbitals are very close to each other and when the electrons are present in these orbitals, there is a repulsion between the dd electrons. It has been observed that dd electron repulsions are less in complex metal ion, for example FeCn6-3- than in a free metal ion that is uncomplex metal ion Fe3+. The decrease in the inter-electron repulsions in the complex metal may be possibly due to the increase in the distance between the d electrons. This increase in the distance between the dd electrons can be attributed to the increase in the size of the d orbitals or we can say expansion of the d electron cloud. This expansion is possible only when there is an overlapping between the metal orbitals and the ligand orbitals. This effect of expanding the d electron cloud of the metal is called as nephiloxotic effect. This expansion indicates overlapping and overlapping indicates presence of covalent bond between the metal and the ligand. In this way, nephiloxotic effect provides an indirect evidence of covalent bonding between the central metal atom and the surrounding ligands. Depending on the ability of the ligands to expand the d electron cloud of the metal, they are arranged in the form of a series which is called as nephiloxotic series. These two experimental evidences prove that there is a presence of covalent bond between the metal and the surrounding ligands. This covalent bonding between the metal and the ligand can be easily studied by molecular orbital theory. In the next video, we will study application of molecular orbital theory to transition metal complexes. If you like my video, click on like, do share and subscribe my channel. If you want to ask something, mention it in the comment box. Don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of my new videos and keep watching basic chemistry. Thank you.